Hello guys, welcome to People's Soft Channel. My name is Siva Khoya and today's topic is configuring App Engine Action plugins. First, we will go through what exactly is App Engine Action plugin. Then I will quickly jump into a hands-on demo. And finally, I will show you how to migrate our changes using Data Migration Workbench. Alright, let's jump into it. Whenever a PeopleSoft customer wants to upgrade their system, main hurdle or time consuming step is taking care of customizations, mainly customizations that touched delivered objects. Hence, Oracle is providing us tools to isolate or eliminate customizations so customers can upgrade their system faster. The main tools Oracle provided so far are page field configurator that we discussed last week event mapping, drop zones, and the tool we are about to discuss, App Engine Action Plugin. Let's see what exactly is App Engine Action Plugin. Suppose we have a delivered App Engine and you want to make changes to the existing SQL or people code action of that App Engine. That's when App Engine Action Plugin comes into play to inject our custom changes through configuration instead of touching delivered actions. Let me show you how to do it. Basically, we have to follow three steps. In the very first step, we do our due diligence and identify where in delivered app engine we have to make the change to solve a business problem. In the second step, instead of touching the delivered app engine program, we include all our custom changes in a separate custom app engine. And third, we link the delivered people code or SQL action to our custom people code app engine action through online configuration. When we link our delivered app engine program with our custom app engine program, we can either choose to override the delivered SQL or people code action or execute before or after delivered SQL or people code action. Some of the things you should be aware of app engine action plugins. This tool was introduced in PeopleTools 8.58 and was enhanced in 8.59. We can only use plugin to add or replace people code or SQL action only. Other action types such as do when, do while, log message, call section are not yet supported. PeopleSoft highlights with an icon when a plugin is configured for a delivered program in the App Engine Program Flow section. The plugin action type does not have to match with the action type that is selected for configuration, which means we can replace SQL action with people code and vice versa. Also, we can replace one SQL action with multiple SQL actions, likewise with people code. In PeopleTools 8.59, Oracle introduced onExit plugin, which allows us to inject custom logic at the end of delivered app engine program. I will show you how this works during our demo session. Here comes the last one. We can reuse our plugins across multiple delivered app engine programs. Enough of talking, it's time to play with it. Now I'll show you a quick demo on how to use app engine plugin. In order to demonstrate, I need to pick a delivered application engine program. Let me pick one. I will navigate to people tools, process scheduler. Schedule process request. I'll click on it. Let's give a new run control and I'll click on run button. This is the app engine I'm going to pick for this demonstration. We usually run this program to test process scheduler after any application or tools upgrade or even server patching. If this program goes to success, we are sure that process scheduler is up and running and files are getting posted. If I open our program in App Designer, as you can see, there are just two actions, SQL and people code. If I open SQL action, there is nothing much going on here. This update will never get executed because zero is never equal to one. If I open people code, they are doing nothing here. Like I said before, we usually run this program to test process scheduler, not to do any processing or any updates. For this demo, let's do one thing. Let's replace this delivered SQL action at runtime with a custom people code action using App Engine plugin. Like I said in the beginning, we have to follow three steps to inject custom code 
into a delivered app engine program. Step number one, we have to identify that specific SQL or people code action that needs to be modified to serve the custom business requirement. We are done with that step. Let's move on to the second step. In the second step, we need to host our custom changes in a new custom application engine program. Let's go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and create a brand new custom application engine program to host our custom changes. I will insert one action and that action is people code. I will go ahead and save our application engine program. Let's start with company code, PeopleSoft channel. Let's name it mini PLG. Inside people code, let's write a simple message box function. I will go ahead and save our changes. In our last step, we need to tie delivered app engine action to our custom app engine action through online configuration. Let's go ahead and do that. To access app engine plugin configuration, I will navigate to people tools, application engine, AE action plugins. And here we need to search for our delivered application engine program, AE mini test. This is how the user interface of AE Action plugin looks like. It's pretty straightforward. First of all, you have to select that specific section and action of our delivered app engine program that we plan to replace with our custom logic. So I'll go ahead and select our specific section main and main section has two steps. I will select step number one and I plan to replace SQL action with our custom people code action. And we have to select our plugin name Plugin name is nothing but the name of our custom app engine program. So our app engine program is PC mini plug. I will tab out. Our plan is to overwrite the delivered SQL action with people code action from the main section of our custom program. I will select specific step of our custom program as well as the action. We have three modes here. Either we can replace the existing delivered SQL action with a custom SQL or people code action or we can execute our custom logic before or after delivered action. In our case we plan to replace so I will select replace mode. We can also tie one delivered action to multiple custom actions. We can do that by adding multiple rows here and we can select the same delivered action and here we can provide different custom actions and we can tell the system to execute this specific custom action first. Next, it should execute the second custom action and so on and so forth. For this demo, I'll keep it simple. I'll just replace SQL with people code action. Let me go ahead and delete these rows. When there is only one row, order is not a required field value. I will remove that. I can enable our plugin. I will save our changes. Now let's open our program again in our app designer. I'll go back to our app designer and I will open our delivered program. Now I will navigate to program flow. Now we can notice lightning icon denoting a plugin is configured for this delivered SQL action. When I click on this SQL action, as you can see here, people tools is telling me at runtime, it is not going to execute the delivered SQL action, but the people code from our custom plugin. Now let's head back to our online application. Before we can test our changes, let's enable trace for our program so that we can see the program flow at runtime. I navigated back to people tools, process scheduler, process scheduler processes. Let's search for our program. Navigated to override options tab. I see trace is already enabled. Now let's go ahead and test our changes. To test our changes, I will navigate to people tools, process scheduler, schedule process request let's use our run control run i will select our program and run it after a couple of seconds the process ran to success if i click on details and then on message log as you can see here our custom plugin got executed now let's go back and click on view log trace as you can see in the trace file at the runtime PeopleSoft did not execute the delivered SQL action. Instead, it called our custom plugin and executed the custom people code. This is it guys. This is how to inject custom logic to a delivered application engine program 
without customizing it. Now, let's explore one more tool provided by Oracle as part of AE Action Plugin. Let me navigate back to AE Action Plugin page. I am talking about OnExit plugin that we can configure here. This is very helpful tool because using this OnExit plugin, we can inject custom code at the end of any delivered App Engine program. We can also make OnExit plugin run on a conditional basis based on the criteria that we can select here. Let me explain how this criteria works. To explain that, I'll head back to my App Designer. And this is the delivered app engine program that we earlier worked on. As you can see here at the end, it is executing people code action. Notice this on return option. This on return is driven by exit statement. You need to understand when this on return option gets executed in order to configure on exit app engine plugin. Allow me to explain this concept. In order to do that, let me open delivered people code. As you can see, nothing is happening here. Let me write some code to explain the concept. Remember that even though I am modifying the delivered people code, you can use App Engine Action plugin to update this delivered people code. Let me paste that code that I have typed ahead of time. The logic is pretty simple. If test is 2, execute the exit of 1. So remember that whenever system encounters exit of 1, that's when on return option gets implemented. Likewise, whenever system encounters exit of zero, whatever we specify inside on return is ignored. In this case, it's saying skip step. So if, if there are four or five steps, it is going to skip this step and move on to the next step. If I have selected break, even though I have only one section main here, if this uh, action is inside another section too, that would break that section and go back to the main section. If I have selected abort and exit 1 is true, that's when the program issues an error and exits immediately. I hope now you got some idea how on return works. Now let's see in action how on return works hand in hand with on exit app engine plugin with the help of hands on exercise. First of all, I will revert the on return action to skip step like original and save my changes. I will keep my custom changes as is. In our next step, we are going to tie on exit app engine plugin to the end of this delivered application engine program through configuration. Just like how we did for app engine action plugin before, I hosted my custom changes in a brand new custom app engine program. And this is that app engine. This app engine got one step and one action, which is people code. This logic basically sends an email with some hard-coded values to a hard-coded email address. That's what this logic does. I also used two system variables provided by people tools. We can leverage these variables to do conditional based processing in our custom logic. For example, this specific system variable returns which delivered app engine invoked this plugin. Based on that, you can tweak your custom logic and reuse this plugin. Likewise, this system variable returns return code of the last step executed in delivered app engine program. If you take a look at our delivered app engine program, what is the return code on the last step of this delivered app engine? In our case, it is skip step. Feel free to explore more about this system variables in people books. As you can see for skip step, the return code will be 102. We should expect that return code as part of email subject when we test our on exit app engine plugin our app engine plugin is not it active let's activate this plugin in order to activate this custom plugin i need to navigate back to our ae plugin page which we visited recently let me navigate to ae action plugin first of all we need to search our delivered app engine where we need to plug our custom logic and here we need to provide the custom program name that should get executed at the very end of the delivered program. So I will search for our custom program. I tabbed out and I can select a section that specific step and the action type is people code. If we want to execute our plugin for all scenarios, we have to check all the four boxes. But in our case, let's execute our plugin 
when return code of last action of delivered app engine is skip step. All right, let's go ahead and enable our custom plugin and save our changes. Now I'll go ahead and quickly run our delivered program. Let me go ahead and check process monitor. The process ran to success. Let's check the message log. As you can see, email was sent successfully, which means our on exit app engine plugin was executed at runtime. In the email I received, return code was correctly populated. This concludes my overview of on exit app engine plugin. If you want to find out for how many of the delivered app engines custom app engine plugins are configured, we can find that out by running a delivered report. In order to run that report, I will navigate to people tools, process scheduler, schedule process request. Let's use existing run control. This is the report that tells us how many app engine plugins are configured. I'll select it and run it. The process ran to success. If I navigate to view log trace, here I can see a report. As expected, both of the plugins that we configured in this episode are shown in the report. This is the regular App Engine Action plugin and this is the on exit App Engine plugin that we just configured. As far as migrations are concerned, there are two parts. We have to migrate both our custom application engine programs that host our custom logic as well as online configuration. We can migrate our custom app engine programs that we used as app engine plugins through app designer project in our regular way. The second part is the online configuration. We can migrate our online configuration that we did on our AE plugin page through data migration workbench. In order to show you that, I will navigate to data migration workbench, people tools, lifecycle tools, migrate data, data migration workbench. Let's add a new data migration workbench project. For our regular app engine action plugin, Oracle provided application data set PTA underscore action plugin. Here we have to search for delivered app engine program for which we have configured app engine action plugin. Our app engine program name is AE. A mini test. I will select our app engine. I will click insert and return. I will click OK. Return. Since we have also configured on exit app engine plugin, we have to add a new data set. And the data set name is on exit plugin. Again, we have to search for our delivered program on which we configured on exit plugin. I will select it. I will click on insert and return. Return. I will save our project. That's pretty much about it. Whenever you are ready, you can click this button and run the process to export your configuration to an external file on your server and use that file to import in your target environment. That's how to migrate your App Engine plugin online configuration from one environment to another environment. That's pretty much about it for today, guys. Next week, I'll be back with one more interesting episode. Until then, adios. Have a great day.